Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here, and today, the Universal Monsters are back and seeking an apprentice. Now you'll be acquiring new skills and chaining them together to spar against your fellow candidates. Unchained is a deck building game for two to four players. It takes about an hour to play, it's for ages 14 and up, and it's published by Trick or Treat Studios. Today I'll be doing a rule school, where I'll teach you how to set up and play the game so that you don't have to read the rule book yourself. So let's get started. Unchained is a deck building game for two to four players where you're going to be sparring with other opponents, using some of the cards that you've placed in play, and using their offensive values to beat their defensive values and winning the spar. And you want to beat them because the loser gets fatigue cards in their discard pile, and at the end of the game, whoever has the least amount of these is going to be the winner. The game has a unique chaining mechanism where you're going to be playing cards and trying to match the main icon on the new card with a linked icon on the previous card, allowing you to chain together lots of combos and abilities that will be triggering that round. But you'll also be purchasing new cards from a purchase area, some common, some better rare cards. And hand management is big in this game because if you have no more cards to draw from your deck, as you recycle the discard pile, that's another way to get these pesky fatigue cards that can keep you from winning. And the game also has pre-constructed decks that you can start with quickly, or you can do a full draft at the beginning of the game. To set up, you're going to give this first player marker to the player that most recently lost a disagreement. First, you're going to separate out all the cards into four different decks. One is you're going to have a whole deck of fatigue cards. Second is you're going to have a whole deck of rare skill cards. These all have a star in the upper right. Then you'll also have a deck of common skill cards, which don't have a star. So they don't have a star up here where these ones do. And finally, you're going to separate out all the cards that have an icon in the bottom right like this. It'll have a shape. There will be 24 total cards, and there'll be only four different shapes. These are going to be the starter decks. Since I'm teaching first-time players, we're going to be using the pre-assembled deck option. Now, you're going to separate out pre-assembled decks. They all will have the same icon, like this triangle here. There will be six cards in each deck. So we have here in the bottom right the different icons. Now, starting to the last player in turn order, that's the one sitting to the right of the one that just received the first player marker, they're going to select one of these four starting decks, and then going in counterclockwise, you'll continue to select them. Since at this point you don't really know how the game's played, you can either come back to the step at the end, or you can just randomly assign each of these decks to any of the players. Now, if you're playing with less than four players, you'll have some of these starter deck cards left over. With those, you're going to shuffle them in to the common skill card deck. Again, this, these are the ones that do not have a star in the upper right. Once those have been shuffled back in, you're going to deal three cards of this deck to each of the players to add to their starting deck. And so at this point, each player will have nine cards. In future games, once you know the game better, if you'd like to create your own starting deck, drafting all your starting cards, you can do so. I'll leave that up to you on page three of the rules to go through here on your own. Then from that deck, you are going to place a three by three grid of face-up cards. Now that the initial purchase area has been dealt, you can take all of the rare cards. That's the deck that has all the cards with the star in the upper right. You're going to shuffle that into now the deck that just has the common cards in there to make one full deck. That means that these rare cards will be coming out in the future throughout the game. Next, you're going to find the fatigue deck. Now you're going to use a certain amount of these cards, seven of them for each player. So for example, if you were playing with three players, three times seven is you're going to count out 21 of these cards to make the fatigue deck. The rest of the cards that aren't being used can be placed in the box. And that fatigue deck can go right next to the skill deck next to the purchase area. Now you're going to give each player a play mat. You're also going to give them a reference card that's double sided. Now remember, everybody has a nine card deck. You're going to shuffle your deck, put it face down next to the deck sport portion of your play mat, and you're going to draw five cards into your hand. You're also going to take the shield marker and make sure it's on the inactive side and place it on the spot on your play mat. The shields will be able to be activated throughout the game using certain card effects. Next, you can set up three sets of double-sided tokens off to the side, but where everyone can still reach them. The object of the game is to have the least amount of these fatigue cards at the end of the game. And as you'll learn later, you get these by losing spars against opponents and by needing to reshuffle your deck. 
Now, starting with the player with the first player marker and going clockwise, you're going to walk through a flow of a turn. And on your player mat, it goes through the four phases that each player will go through on their turn. The first one is spar. We're going to come back to this later because this will never happen in the first round because you won't have any cards in play yet. So we're going to go through the chain phase now. Now, since you're the active player, if you have at least one card, you have to play a card. And you'll play it in front of you like this. Now, these cards are not considered to be in play per effects. You're playing them down and you're going to, after you play one card, you can decide to link cards with other cards that are in your hand. Like this. Now, how does this work? This is the main icon in the upper left, Bite here. These are the link icons. When I chain a card after this, directly after it, the main icon on that card needs to match one of the two linked. So because this matches that, I could do it. Now, if I wanted to play another card, I could stop if I want to. Remember, you always have to play one card, but you can chain as many as you can or want to. So if I have a main icon with one of these two, I could link another card. So I did. This one matches that. And I could keep going like this. And so I just played this last one. Now I have started to overlap these showing the links like this. Now again, these are not in play. Now I like to keep these underneath below my player mat to keep them separated from the ones that are in play. But if you don't have a lot of table space, you can put them above your player aid where it says in play, but you wanna put them at a 45 degree angle so you can tell that these are not the cards that are quote unquote in play. We're gonna to get to a little bit later what that means. Now remember, you have to play one card if you can, then you can play as many as you want. You can stop at any point. Let's say I stop. Now at this point, the player next to me clockwise is going to have the opportunity to chain. Now, they have to look at the last card I played. In this case, these are my two link icons. If they are going to play a card, their main icon has to match one of those two. And those players are going to place them in their area just like we did with ours. So for example, the next player could play this card because it links to my last card on one of the links. Now once it gets all the way around the table, meaning the player to the right of the one that has the first player marker, that's the last player in clockwise order, they have had the opportunity to chain. Then all of the chains are going to resolve, but they're going to resolve from the last player and their most recent card played all the way up through all the other players in counterclockwise order. Meaning this is going to resolve, then this, then this, then the player to their right is going to do the same thing from the bottom up and all the way around counter counterclockwise. So let's say it got back to us. And again, we're going to resolve our, our chain cards from most recent played to, to the, the first card played. Now, there's different types of cards. Uh, the starter cards you can see here, these have combat values. These are all combat cards. Um, sometimes there's a basic effect here. There isn't one here. Sometimes you might be able to do a bonus effect. I would be able to do this bonus effect if this icon matched the main icon of the card that was played right before it. In this case, it doesn't. So I'm showing you the most basic example possible for the first resolve here, where there's nothing here, we can't do this. This card now just becomes in play. Now remember, these are the cards that are above your play mat here. These are now in play. This is gonna be important during the sparring phase in the, you know, the next time we come around there. Now we come to this one. Here's an effect. Now, the player aid card that you have has all of the things that you'll need. So I'm not gonna go over all the effects in this video because they're all listed here, but we'll go through this one, for example. This says, choose one player to effect. And this, if we look at this, says, choose one card to effect. And this says, decrease defense. So let's look at another player's player. They have a couple of cards in play from earlier and I get to decide a player and I get to decide the card. So let's say, hey, player here and this card, I want this affected and they're gonna gain the minus defense token uh, like that, for example. So now their defense went from a three, now it's down to a two. Now, if a card ever has an offensive or defensive value that goes to zero, that card is discarded and the tokens are put back in the supply. Also, if you have a token that decreases and another one that is increased is placed on there, then they both just get removed because they essentially cancel each other out. So we just did this basic effect now. Again, the bonus effect, this icon matches the main icon of the one played just before it, so this triggers. And again, this is saying, choose one player to effect, and that player must draw one card from their deck. And keep in mind, in the rule book on pages nine through 11, have details of all of the abilities. Now again, I'm not gonna go through all the effects because they're cl clearly written on the player aids. So in this case, after I'm done resolving all my cards, all of those are now in play. Now I wanna show you another type of card that you might be resolving. These are not combat cards, because if you recognize, they don't have any offensive or defensive values here. These are action cards, because uh, they have this on there. 
Now, when you resolve this card, you would resolve this here by getting one talent. This is a token like that. That's gonna be used to purchase cards later that I'll show you. Uh, but you would still also try to resolve the basic and the bonus ability as well. And once that's done, this card, because it's not a combat card, goes to your discard pile. Then you're gonna to go to the learn phase. Now, you're going to discard all of the cards from your hand. And for each of those, you're going to get an effort token that looks like that. Then you can spend one effort token to discard any column or row from the purchase area, then refilling it from the deck. So let's say I didn't like any of these cards. And so those have been discarded and they've been replaced. Now you can do this as many times as you can afford and want to. Then you must select a row or column from the purchase area. So let's say, hey, we like this one. Let's take this row that just got uh, redone there. Now it could have been any row or column, but you look at that and you're gonna, you, you get one of the common cards if there is one. If even if there's more than one, you select one common card. So in here, there's only one. If I was selecting this column, I must select one of these common cards to add to my discard pile for free. But since I'm taking this one, since this is the only common card, that's the one I would take. And that goes right to your discard pile. Then, if you want to, you can pay two effort tokens for each additional card, whether it's a common or rare, like these are the rare ones, uh, that you'd like to gain. So these two are left, this was the row I took, I could spend two to take one of these. So let's say I spent two and took the drag down that went to my discard pile. Then if I want to, I can pay two talent tokens for each additional card I'd like to gain from anywhere. Now remember those talent tokens that you're spending, uh, some, you get them from other cards, but those are the ones that you're spending to take cards from anywhere in the purchase area, two per card. And you can purchase as many as you can afford. Now after making all the purchases that you want, all the remaining cards that are still there from the chosen row or column, in this case we chose this row, this one was not bought, it goes to the discard pile and then you simply refill it. And that is the end of your learn phase. Then you're going to go to the draw phase and you're going to draw five cards off the top of your deck into your hand. However, if when drawing those five cards you have no more cards left, take all of the cards from your discard pile, shuffle them, and place them as your deck then draw up from this deck to get to your hand size of five. However, if you remember, the winner of this game is the one that's gonna have the least amount of fatigue cards. And anytime you shuffle your deck, you must take one of these fatigue cards and place it in your discard pile. Now this gets placed there after you've shuffled your discard pile and made your deck. So this will be the only card here. However, if you remember, this shield was in the inactive side. Now let's pretend it was on the active side. Anytime you're supposed to take a fatigue card and it's on the active side, instead of receiving the fatigue card, you flip it over to its inactive side. But in this case, let's pretend it was on its inactive side when we shuffled our deck and so we do have a fatigue card in our discard pile. Then, since it's the end of your turn, you're gonna pass the active player marker to the player to your left and you're gonna walk through all of these steps again. So remember that on your turn, you're doing spar if you can, which we're gonna go over in a minute. Then you're gonna chain this is the phase that all other players will also be able to chain if they want to. Then you're going to learn, you're going to draw, pass the player marker. That's how the flow works. So let's say it was our turn again, and these are our cards in play. Remember, these are the combat cards that were already activated uh, from our chain on a previous turn. They're now up here, and let's say it's our turn. We're going to go through uh, the spar. So you're going to select an opponent, and you're going to look at your offensive value. So I have four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, I have 10. I'm gonna pick any opponent. And we're gonna look at their defensive values. So four, five, six. This three is now two because of that. So they have a total of eight. They have less than us. And since they had less, whoever had less is going to get a fatigue card into their discard pile. Remember, if your shield was on the active side, you don't take it, you just flip it to the inactive side. Then after your spar, you're gonna take all the cards that are there and you're gonna place them in your discard pile, removing any tokens and putting them back in the supply if there were any. Now it's important to note, only the attacking player discards their cards. The player being attacked does not. Another note is you can spar with a player that has no cards in play and essentially you've beaten them because they have a defense of zero. Now this flow continues until there are no fatigue cards left to be taken. Keeping in mind that if you're supposed to take one and there aren't any, you take one from the box. And each player is gonna count out all of the fatigue cards. And if this is all of the ones they have, that means in their hand, in their deck, and in their discard pile, all of them. Whoever has the least 
is the winner. If it's tied, from those tied players, whoever has the most rare cards is the winner. If it's still tied, then the, from those tied players, the one that has the most common cards is the winner. And if it's still tied, you rejoice in your shared victory. Well, I hope this helped you dive right into Unchained faster than you normally would if you had to read the rulebook yourself. Now, if you have questions about the rules, there's a link below me right in the description of this video. That's the best place to ask them because I'll get notified, but so will Trick or Treat Studios.